Once a long time ago, there was a king named Boleslaw. He was the king of Poland, and he was a man of great strength and great love for his country. He was a great warrior. The day he died, the trees in Poland bent over in grief. The rivers and streams ran with tears. The mountains trembled in sorrow. Legend has it that the great king sleeps deep in a cave under one of the mountains with his army of warriors, waiting there for the day when Poland needs him the most, when his country calls him back to the field of battle. Now the great king guards the entrance to that cave, standing trance-like, a sentinel watching his sleeping army. And the only person who has ever seen them is a blacksmith. For once each year, a blacksmith goes to that cave and he shoes the great war horses of the king's army. And that blacksmith has belonged to the same family as the centuries have gone down in time. And every year when he finishes, he's given one gold coin by the king. But he must do his work in complete silence. Not a word, not a sound can escape his lips. For if it does, the army will think that Poland is under threat and they will come to life. And so each blacksmith shoes those horses without a sound, not a word. One year, the old blacksmith, who had done it for many, many, many decades, was ill. And his grandson, who was going to be a blacksmith someday, like his grandfather, turned to him and said, Grandfather, I can do it. Now the boy was young, but not that young. And the old man didn't think he really was ready for this, but he was too weak to go himself. And he said, all right, all right, my son, but please be careful and remember, not a word, not a sound can escape your lips. The young man promised, and he gathered his tools and a huge bag filled with new horseshoes. And off he went to the mountain. And he found the cave, and he walked in, and there was the king, trance-like at the entrance, guarding his army. And that young man moved from one horse to the other, each horse standing next to a warrior who lay there on a pallet, their long hair streaming down behind them, their long beards flowing down their chests, each man in golden armor with a sword, a battle axe, and a spear resting against his pallet. Even the horses were armored and arrayed in gold cloth. And so quietly the young man shooed each horse of that sleeping army. Around that cave he went. And finally he came to the last horse, the king's own charger. He was putting on the last shoe when it slipped from his hands and it hit his foot and he went, ow! And as the words, as the sound went out of his lips, heads started to rise off their beds. Eyes opened, and the great warriors looked around and said, Is it time? Does our country need us? Where is the threat? Where is the enemy? We're ready. But the young man clamped his hand over his mouth and stood there in silence. And when there was no reply, the warriors, one by one, lay back down on their beds. He finished shoeing the horse, and as he went out, the king stood in front of the entrance. But there was no gold coin for this young man. The king drew his sword and hit him with the flat of the sword, and he hit him again and again and drove him out of that cave. When the old man died, the young grandson refused to shoe those horses, and no one has ever gone back there to take care of them since. But underneath the mountain, deep in the heart of Poland, the king, the great king, he waits with his army, and someday when Poland needs him the most, he will ride forth and do battle again. 
And that's the story of the king and the sleeping army.